random orbital sander from Milwaukee runs on their 12 volt M12 platform. Uh, they have this in both both a 3 16th orbit as well as a 3 32nd orbit as well. So a little finer orbit, uh, depending on what you want to do. It also comes with two different pads with a hook and loop pad as well as an adhesive pad as well. Get great dust extraction and this can be set up to run on the left hand side or the right hand side to, to extract the dust on either side. Very little vibration. And turn on the vacuum, push of a button right here. And now extract all that dust, nothing's flying in the air. Can also adjust speed right here with the dial. And be able to control that very easily. So whether I'm wanting to be really aggressive or really fine, whether you're doing paint correction or whether you're literally, literally doing paint and body work. It's the 2584 and the 2585 M12 random orbital sander. We're here at the Martin Industries booth and they have their cordless impact wrench running on their 21 volt batteries. You're looking at about 800 foot pounds of torque. And then they also go into their pneumatic impact wrenches as well and even their extended anvil impact wrenches with 945 foot pounds of torque. Adjustable speeds easily right there on the rear as well as forward and reverse easy operation there for the pneumatic tools and for the cordless impact. Electronic controls right there at the base of the tool to select between speeds. Also the floor jacks from Martins have an easy release lever right there for your feet. Low profile design as well as standard floor jacks as well. I need you to use your imagination just a little wee bit. Let's imagine I've snapped the head off the bolt. I've got a stud in there, right? Yep. I've decided the number five is the one I'm going to use and I've drilled my cabin. That's where we are. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer. And I'm in. Yep. Underneath is a left-handed set of drill bits. The index tells you which one to use with which one. Nice and easy, right? So we have an example here of a tapered cone extractor and ours. Ours is a straight cut, obviously not a tapered cone, which means when I drill a cavity and I hammer it in, I've got 100% engagement not just at the top leading edge with a cone. I have these little flutes that cut grooves into the cavity that lock it in so now I'm bi-directional and I can work things back and forth. You cannot do that with that one, no sir. And if you look at the grooves at the flutes when I spin it, they're fluted to the left so it doesn't fight against its own design. It pulls the pressure to the center under load. Pretty neat idea, right? So it goes with the grain of, un of unthreading something. So the head design truly is remarkable, and it's the best grip you're going to get. Because that's its only job, is to grip. That's all it does. So let's talk about our threaded sleeve. I get that. A threaded sleeve does a couple of different functions. Function number one, drill your hole, hammer it in, take the sleeve and spin it down to the surface, and give it a little snug. What that does is it locks it into place, so if you're at an odd angle, you won't peel it out of the cavity. And it also reinforces it at the head because they always snap at the top of the cavity, so it makes it a little bit stronger. So what we'll do is give you a ratchet and just give that a little torque, feel that. These are not a pound and pray, hope it grabs extractor. This thing locks down in, wow, right? So, and also, as I said, it gives me the ability to manipulate things back and forth, right? Boom, like that. So the next function of that sleeve is that if I'm in a situation where I want to heat this, it's not going my way, and I want to heat up the bolt, and I don't want to burn the tool up, if I continue to spin down on the sleeve, it becomes a puller and it'll pull out of the cavity. Right? Yeah. So now, I can heat that metal up without bluing up and softening my tool. Now, because of the way that head's designed, I can put it back in the cavity and I just put it back in the same grooves I made the first time. 
And now it's heated up, and you're, you're hoping that it's just going to... That's all I need. Just enough. But torque on it. It bites down the second time just as well as it did the first time. There is not another extractor that can do that, where you can unengage it and re-engage it and have it bite like that, right? So we're going to go ahead and once again, for the second time in one day, he's smiling because out comes the broken bowl. Mark's like, must go get a lottery ticket because I just Today won twice. The last thing that extractor sleeve will do for me is walk that right off the table. Yeah. Okay, wow. Dan's hands are really stark to hurt. It's been a long three days. Hey, wait, there's only one hey, more to go. Wait, I got wait, one more. more to go. I got another day left in me. I'm a tough old boy. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, vices are really <laughs> my hands are truly done. But I'm just gonna let that hold it for me. I think that's a great idea. And I will just come over here, crank it down. And it really is that easy. It is that easy. There we go. Come off This is the Vessel battery powered screwdriver and you can recharge this with a USB cable. And you have forward and reverse action. They have a special gold edition here at the SEMA show. They're going to be selling for the Christmas season. It's going to run you somewhere around uh, 80 to $90 for the whole kit here that comes with the bits and the screwdriver and the case. So obviously you get forward action, reverse action, and 80 inch pounds of torque with this. Also a little LED light there as well. Very handy little tool. Obviously you can use this manually also. Also, they have their new ratchet, and this is not only a manual ratchet, but as you can see here on this bolt, push the button, tighten it. I can also apply manual force, flip the bit, loosen, push the button. This will be launching in the second quarter of 2025. Check out Vessel. So we first clean the tubes in radial motion to remove any contamination, corrosion, and so forth from the tubes. And we apply the anaerobic sealant to the end of the tubes to be joined. Put the connector over the tube. Turn the connector. Same thing with the second side. And with the manual tool, you can see a radial reduction by moving the ring to the center stop. Once it makes contact, that side's completed. Second side, we'll use the electric tool. Perfect. This is the Knipex 9752 67 DT crimper. This specifically crimps these guys right here. Let me show you how that works. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one off because I just used that one. All I'm going to do is strip off that much of the wire. I'll get this nice and tight. Just like that. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is drop it right in the center of the hole. Squeeze the handle. Let it go. And now I got a nice perfect crimp. You could tell because there's an inspection hole right at the top. That's where the wire's at. And I want the crimp between the inspection hole and the end of the connector. And that's how you use the DT crimper. We're here at the glass weld booth and we're gonna show a fixing a crack and I get to make the crack. There you go. I would say that's a pretty legit crack there with the uh, center punch. So yeah, I'm pretty much just gonna get this thing going. Grab some suction cup sealant. This basically is going to let me uh, move the suction cups around the glass as needed. Uh, also helps stick to the windshield a little bit better. Don't want too too much, so just a little bit. I'm going to line up here, stick it to the glass, make sure my suction cups are good. I'm going to grab my injector here. White seals almost never go bad. You'll lose them before. <laughs> so, going to go ahead and. Make some room here for my resin. 
So this is our Onyx. Came out with this about a year ago. It's really dark tinted resin. Uh, kind of works how sunglasses works. Refracts the glass. Helps hide the breaks a bit better. I'm going to use six drops here. Typically four to six is all you need. So, grab my white seal here. Push the resin back up until it's touching the bottom of that white seal. Basically, it creates surface tension, keeps the resin from falling out. Now we're good to go. Place this into my stand, the ratchet claw. I'm going to make sure I am lined up. We do have a mirror, but we just don't like using it on the demo. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I'm lined up here. Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and now push down a little bit more. So right now it's just touching the glass. Create a proper seal. Ratchet claw system, about one, maybe two clicks. One, two clicks is good there. And I'm going to go ahead and pull back all the way on the injector and start my first vacuum. Now we're going to be doing a total of four cycles. Two vacuum cycles, two injection cycles. Uh, first one, nice and quick. Just can do like 10, 15 seconds. Just want to get things started. It's going to be the same thing with the first injection cycle. Now if you want to hop on the other side, you can probably get a little bit of a better view on the first injection. You'll start to see it a little bit right off the uh, Of course the legs will take a little bit longer, but that center is going to fill in quite quick. Yep. Once again, this is just be a quick cycle, real quick. Uh, just getting things started. We're gonna pull another back. Make sure we get all the air. She has a good. She has a good, very good sense of it. Is there a certain amount of turnage you're looking for for the vacuums? No, so the vacuum feel? just goes all the way back. Okay, you're going all the way all out. The way okay, yeah. gotcha. And it seems I might even be able to get another click. Uh, now we're good. Now, what's cool about these tools here is you can see it's pretty hands off just going through the cycles and I'm waiting, sitting here waiting. So uh, if you wanted to, there's no harm in letting it sit longer. So I'm gonna get this done as quickly as possible with this Dremel tool here with a polishing fork on it. What I'm gonna do with this is take it on the inside of the glass. So I'm gonna massage the brake, which creates vibration. You're creating, okay. And the vibration is what's gonna help that resin flow a lot quicker. So all he's doing is creating basically a frequency, a vibration uh, that's allowing that resin to flow a little little quicker, a little easier. In fact, I can see that one little leg starting to kind of disappear there. May not be visible on the camera, but it's definitely working what he's doing. So again, you could probably wait this out, uh, but he's speeding up that process by using that Dremel. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back on the pressure a little bit, a little bit of positive pressure. And I'm gonna grab our curing light here. It's the Procure Smart. This thing's pretty cool. I'm going to stick to the windshield real quick. Let this thing go through a cycle so you know it's working when that light turns on. Uh, we got some UV lights on the back end there. It's giving a nice 360 degree cure. Now, what's really cool about this curing light is it's actually frequency tuned with our resin. Meaning it's designed to cure our resin very, very quickly. Typically, this thing's going to take somewhere between 45 seconds to a minute. There we go. And now that it's done, you can see the light turns off. It beeps to let you know it's done. It's loud in here, you might not have heard it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off my injector now. Sometimes I like to grab a fresh, clean paper towel, wipe it off a little bit. But it's also not really necessary. What I'm gonna do next, still a little bit of a pit left over. Uh, I do recommend using a clean one for this, but I'm gonna wipe it off just so I can show you guys how to do this real quick. If you can, you can even feel the leftover pit. So there's this little pit on the a glass, bit. it's where the rock hit the glass, uh, removing a lot of it. So we're going to get that filled in, flush with the rest of it. Little chip filler. And I'm going to grab my film tab here. Basically a piece of mylar. Place this on top, keep the resin in place there. And I'm gonna cure one more time. Once again, we got another long 45 seconds ahead of us. <laughs> uh, finish once again, just pop it off. I'm gonna pop off my film tab and I'm gonna grab a razor blade here and I'm gonna scrape off the excess. So to get it as flat as possible, doing it at this 90 degree angle is best. 
you just go until you remove all that excess. You got a little bit, being a little stubborn here, so I'm gonna do this a little bit. So you can pretty much feel it now. Pretty much flush with the rest of the yeah. glass. Um, there's a lot of broken glass there, so I think I'm gonna come back to it uh, later, but for now, I'm just gonna polish it up and we should be pretty much good to go. A little bit too much polish there. We're gonna get it all over the glass now, but that's all right. You're using your same cork? Yeah, same polishing tool. Quick, you need to see it. All right, yeah, so here we are, the finished product. Um, you know, with our tools, typically you get anywhere from 70 to 90% visibility back. Right. Depends on the break. Some are gonna turn out better than others. It's the nature of rock chip repair, but the before and after is quite a significant difference. Absolutely. We're here at the Flex booth at the SEMA show, checking out the Flex Stack Pack backpack. So they've learned a lot of things here. Number one, it integrates with their Stack Pack system, clips into place. We got a large, oversized lumbar support, keeps you away from the clip here, so you're not scratching your back on that. So large padding back here, plenty of padding. You stay comfortable all day long. We have places everywhere to attach your carabiners, to put things. We got pockets everywhere. Got a nice hard shell here on the front. Open this up more pockets and we can open up the main compartment even more space in here water resistant pocket here for any electronics you have more pockets up here and obviously slots and pockets for your screwdrivers and tools and a large area down here with a hard bottom as well and then even up here on the back even more space for your laptops for your tablets and any other large items you need to stack away. These are already available now, and again, integrates with their stack pack system. So these are products from a company called J-Tape, and this just makes your life so much easier when you're in the paint and body world, collision repair world. So what we're gonna use here is the J-Tape Prime and Paint Foam Masking Tape. You just pull this off, pull it apart. So if you know of any uh, or you've used foam in the past, it's always about applying the foam to the jam side of the car. And the problem with that is that placement is not exactly where you need it. A lot of times it falls off and it's not exactly doing the job you wanted to do. So you're going to put it on the moving part side. There's no, uh, you don't have to pull off any sticker. No back, no back masking there. The adhesive is right there on the J-Tape. Yeah, we just got a little line of adhesive on this side. And then we're gonna match up the outline of the, of the door. Then we close the door. And you'll see it's sticking out a little bit here and a little bit here. That is fine because we, basically it becomes a flutter foam. So as you're spraying your sealer, this car now has been cleaned and ready to go. We're gonna spray some sealer here. And as your sealer dries, then you go ahead and pull the top edge and leave that foam that was in there, you can leave it there, press it down to the depth you like. It now becomes ready to spray base coat. Spray your base coat. Uh, we'll mimic this as a spreader. You just bring it down just a tab so that you make a little bit more room for that soft feather edge with your clear. And now you're ready for clear. Spray your clear. Once the clear tacks up, you open the door, slowly pull that off. Done deal. So what we've got here is the High Torque Lion Torque Gun, which is amazing in itself but they're really showcasing the center lock nut. Now you'll watch here, uh, usually when you're using a torque gun like this, you need a reactionary arm to handle this, but they're handling it all with their center lock nut and their socket here, their customized socket. As you can see, the center lock is loose. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make sure I'm in tighten mode. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tighten with one hand, pull the trigger, push the button. What we're gonna do is tighten the 600 Newton meters and then it's going to back off 60 degrees and then it's going to retighten to 60 to 600 newton meters and i'm never releasing this trigger fingers on the trigger entire time now it's retightening right now it's retightening to 600 newton meters 
and then it'll back off just a little bit to give me enough slop to back this off. And there we go. So now we've tightened it, backed it off, tightened it again, and now we're solid on this. You see the wheel never turned, my hand never turned, there was no torque applied to my hand or to the tool. So we're here at the Apex Show and checking out Adapticase's booth and they make everything from uh, these fabricated tables here to all these adapters you see hanging off the table and then even uh, Teflon ring resizers as you see right here, just beautiful art pieces if you will that are going to function very, very well, make your life a lot easier. So check out Adapticase for all your tool needs.